It was a portrait of power and privilege, private jets, high society, exclusive parties with the future president, hobnobbing with heads of state, even royalty. I think we expect child predators to look like monsters, but really they are lurking among us. Now nearly a year after his death, the gilded house of cards continues to fall. Today we announced the arrest of one of the villains in this investigation. Ghislaine Maxwell finally stands charged for her role in these crimes. This is a day of reckoning. Today, Ghislaine Maxwell under arrest, the alleged madam and right hand of the disgraced financier who died by apparent suicide last August in a Manhattan jail while awaiting trial on charges of sex trafficking. The saga of Jeffrey Epstein did not end when he died by suicide in jail. Federal prosecutors had kept on digging. The 58-year-old British socialite accused of grooming three unnamed teenage victims between 1994 and 97. Prosecutors alleging she assisted, facilitated, and contributed to Jeffrey Epstein's abuse of minor girls by, among other things, helping Epstein to recruit, groom, and ultimately abuse victims. The overall conspiracy and this crime of using wealth and, and status to, to lure young children. I mean, that is that is shocking on, on all levels, particularly in this case where the, the volume of young girls and the, the travel between states, the involvement of, of pilots and chefs and, and so many people knew about this that were looking the other way. Maxwell now charged with six counts, including conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex acts, transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity and perjury. According to the indictment, Maxwell encouraged minor victims to provide massages to Epstein, including sexualized massages during which a minor victim would be fully or partially nude. And so why do you think it took authorities so long to make this arrest? I think that the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York have done an incredible job and they are being very meticulous. They want to make sure that the indictment sticks. Sigrid McCauley is representing several women who have allegations against Jeffrey Epstein. They took a, a lot of time to be very careful and thoughtful and that gives me a lot of hope that she will remain in prison for the remainder of her life. Arrested in New Hampshire, Maxwell waived her right to a detention hearing there, clearing her way for transfer to New York, where she'll be temporarily detained. Maxwell had been labeled a flight risk in the government's motion for detention. They cited her international connections, including holding three passports and significant financial means. She'd been hiding out in this 156-acre New Hampshire estate, acquired through an all-cash purchase in December 2019. She had been long rumored to be in Europe, maybe in California, but ultimately the FBI had tracked her down in New Hampshire, where she had been living, according to the FBI, in a gorgeous home, continuing to lead a life of privilege. 25 years after she allegedly inflicted this kind of abuse on minor victims. Maxwell has previously denied all allegations that she facilitated or participated in any of the sex trafficking. This morning was a very joyful and tearful filled morning. It was a wonderful moment in my journey with these survivors to be able to call them and tell them that the one person who's been out in the public without being held accountable was finally in prison. How do your clients describe Ghislaine's role in Jeffrey Epstein's crimes and her own for that matter? She was really, Ghislaine was really the central figure. So she worked hand in hand with Jeffrey Epstein to be able to facilitate these crimes over the course of more than two decades. And she was, was the main person who assisted him and allowed him to be able to perpetrate so many crimes against young females. Some of the alleged victims have said that it wasn't just that she was an adult, but that she was female. The women say that played a role in, in the way they saw Jeffrey Epstein before these alleged crimes. And she would try to present herself in this like maternal, you know, cool, big sister kind of way. And then when things would get sexual, um, the victims would be more put at ease just by, by having this, this trusted older woman there. Ghislaine Maxwell first met Epstein in the early 90s. He met her through a mutual friend in New York. By most accounts, their boyfriend and girlfriend, I mean, I use that term pretty loosely because certainly they had a very open relationship. Ghislaine was 100% the lady of the house. It was through her connections uh, as 
a, a daughter of a, a wealthy publisher in London, that Jeffrey Epstein began to hobnob with the rich and famous. She was the one with the social connections. He was the one with the money. Epstein and Maxwell socialize with the international jet set, including power players like President Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. But both say they knew nothing of his behavior and that they had distanced themselves from Epstein. But it was Epstein's relationship with Prince Andrew, son of the Queen of England, that sent shockwaves. The ill-fated friendship began in 1999 when Maxwell, an old friend of the prince, introduced them. Prince Andrew speaking with the BBC. He had the most extraordinary ability to bring um, uh, extraordinary people together. Prince Andrew stayed with Epstein at his properties in New York, West Palm Beach, and at his private island in the Caribbean. He also flew on his private jet, but behind the glamour, sinister allegations. I had just been abused by a, a member of a royal family. So when you talk about these chains, you know, yeah, I wasn't chained to a sink, but these powerful people were my chains. In a December interview with the BBC's Panorama, Virginia Gouffre, whose maiden name is Roberts, alleges Epstein and Maxwell directed her to have sex with Prince Andrew in 2001, when she was just 17. This is not some sordid sex story. This is a story of being trafficked. This is a story of abuse. And this is a story of your guys' Your, your guys is royalty. Gouffre says that Maxwell recruited her when she was just 16 and then groomed her to become Jeffrey Epstein's underage sex slave. In court filings in a defamation case against Maxwell, Gouffre claimed Epstein ordered her to have sex with some of his powerful friends, including on three occasions, Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew has denied all her claims. In this BBC interview from November, he maintains he has no recollection of Gouffre and never had sex with her. I can absolutely categorically tell you it never happened. In a statement in response to the BBC's panorama, Buckingham Palace said the Duke unequivocally regrets his ill-judged association with Jeffrey Epstein and deeply sympathizes with those affected who want some form of closure. Now, speculation growing about what will come to light now that Maxwell is in custody. Sigrid McCauley also represents Virginia Gouffre. Should Prince Andrew be concerned? I think Prince Andrew should be very concerned, yes. He has been asked by the government to give testimony, which it's my understanding he has refused to give. My own firm has asked him for his deposition, which he, again, has refused. Uh, someone who has nothing to hide would not be refusing to cooperate. When we come back, we hear from one of Epstein's first accusers. If the FBI had listened to me in 1996, there would have been no more victims. It would have prevented the massive destruction that Jeffrey Epstein caused. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.